This is Casey Ellert with Bass Brawl Outdoors, and this morning we're gonna go chase some pre-spawn bass. They were kind of in that stage where they are building beds about a week ago, and then we had some absolute cold weather come in and drop the water temp 12 to 15 degrees. Totally threw the fish, put them in a funk, pushed them off the beds, and now they're just starting to get back up in those areas. The key that you're gonna see today is we've been finding them, not up along the cattails where I like to usually build beds and that, but out in the middle of these bays. We just pull into a bay, and use the side imaging, go across the bay, and you look for the big beds that they've been building. And when you find the sweet spot, you might find 15, 20, 25 beds in one big area, and that's where we're fishing. I'm hoping they're not locked on the beds. I'm hoping they're just milling around and kind of in that general area, because it's a lot easier to catch them than if they're locked down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in these bays, and I'm gonna rig up with a swim jig, and just a curly tail grub to start. Since the water is three to four feet out in the middle of those bays, I'm gonna go with a quarter ounce all-terrain swim jig and just a five inch green pumpkin curly tail grub. I'm usually throwing 40 pound braid and I just use the simple common polymer knot like everybody uses for their braid. Real simple, fast, easy, never fails so you can trust it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my green marker, color line. Some people have preference for floral carbon. I grew up with braid. I'm used to braid. I love everything about braid. I have a medium action Mega Bass Deimos rod, seven foot two. And that medium action gives me enough give when I feel a fish hit this braid. It's an absolute perfect setup. Now we're ready to go catch some fish. So we're just gonna head into this back bay area. And I was out here two days ago and the fish weren't up along the cattails. They were out in the middle of the bay, just milling around their areas where they had their beds. Without side imaging, there is no way to know where those fish were out there. Unless you just got lucky doing some blind casting. They might have all moved up to the cattails. You know, they were out in this deep water, then yesterday it got warm. So we made a quick zip across the middle of this bay where all these fish were two days ago. And I can tell the, just those warmer temps over a day, six, de six degrees the water went up. But I can already tell the fish must have repositioned and moved because they're not in this area. So based on these fish not doing what they were doing two days ago, I know another bay where the water temp was a little colder so that should be about the stage where this bay was two days ago. So after this one, we're gonna jump over there and see if we can get those fish to go. A couple of days ago, I could not get them to bite for anything, no matter what I threw. So this might be the perfect deal to go in there and hit those. So since these fish aren't out in the middle of the bay anymore, we're gonna run up here and we're gonna fish the windy side of the cattails. There's not much of a breeze, but it's enough to blow that warm surface water onto this side of the bay. So we're just gonna do a quick rundown about 50 yards of cattails and base our decision where we're going next off of that. So when I'm fishing these cattails, I'm just looking for these little pockets, points, anything that looks a little different where a fish could be sitting alongside it or tucked up in there. And right there, that fish came out and just blasted it. So I think those fish with the warmer temps just happened to move up a little bit here. Okay, so one fish can be a fluke. We'll see if we can get another one. That was only like the third cast up against the windy cattails. It was already a fish. Oh, there's one. As I quickly found out, that fish was a fluke. I had one more bite, and after that, I fished that windy edge out to the end of that bay, and I did not get another bite until I got to the muskrat lodge you're about to see. So there's a muskrat lodge and you can see the deep trench he's got. There. So 
So I came out of that bay and I figured if the fish weren't in there anymore, or at least not as many, they pulled out. So I started fishing that edge along there and man, it was still tough. A couple small fish, there was just nothing going. I mean, you didn't see anything. I looked out a little bit deeper on that first break. There was nothing on the graph. It was just tough. It was totally different than what I was expecting to happen that day. So far, we're just finding a lot of these smaller fish. So we're gonna change up our location and see if we can find some bigger ones. Okay, so you can see here, we're just going across this bay. There's a bed there, there's a white dot on it. There's a fish on that one. There's a bed there, there's one here. This is an area where I turn around and come back and fan cast the area with a swim jig. And if the fish aren't active, I'm gonna lock down with the talons. Once I get that bed on the 360, so I can keep the boat dead on that cast and I can just pitch over and over and over at the bed. Well, in the middle of this bay, this is what we're looking for. Just big divots. So I poked around on those offshore beds, hoping that there's fish out there. And there might have been, but I didn't see anything on the graph. And I fan cast it all over that. And I even pitched to some beds. Still never got any fish. So at this point, the only fish I'd caught were up against the bank. So I headed to a new area and started fishing along the bank again. There he's coming to get it. There he's got it. There! Is a little bit different it's got some offshore wood and i thought man with that sun shining on there and heating things up maybe it's got these fish going no bites there and then you see i come to a muskrat lodge up at the end of this a lot of times that deep depression will have fish hanging out not so much well right down from there i finally stuck a somewhat decent fish especially for this day but again then it, the bite basically stopped and then it was on to another spot This ended up being one of those tough days where they just never really got going. I jumped around quite a bit. I didn't waste too much time in one spot. It seemed like you could catch a couple small fish in each area, but the big fish were just not there and they just weren't going. I'm fortunate to be in a spot where we have a bunch of lakes really close. So there's no point in wasting your day on a bite like this. You're way better off to load the boat, head to the next lake and hope that something else is going on different size of lakes, different water temps, all sorts of things can lead to one lake being on fire and one lake just not. 